Man. Kelly and Sharon, thank you so much for your graciousness, your hospitality. I have to tell you, when my staff found out where I would be this afternoon, half of them were drooling that I was going to be with Kelly, and the other half thought, Sharon is hot. So, <laughs> and I also want to recognize that a fellow elected colleague is here from the state of Arizona, fighting the good fight for all of us. Where is Kirsten Cinema? All right, I want to make sure she knew we appreciated her presence. So thank you for being here to celebrate our day. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Equality California. Thank you, Stuart Milk, who has really taken on the mantle of Harvey's legacy so articulately and with such passion and dignity, impressing people every country that he's visiting and bringing that message of hope that Harvey lived so. You know, when we were at the White House, to have the president bestow upon Harvey posthumously the highest civilian honor of the land, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, presenting it to Stuart. In his beautifully worded short biography, there were 16 honorees that day, he spoke beautifully of Harvey. But what I remember him saying was that Harvey's message of hope was hope unashamed, hope unafraid. And it kind of makes you stand up taller. Hope unashamed, hope unafraid. So it's been a, a long ride. Jeff has shared most of it with you. We put our heads together a couple years ago and thought, yeah, we could do a state day for Harvey Milk. Now, of course, since the state has absolutely no money, we couldn't have it cost a penny. So we couldn't create a holiday with workers getting a paid day off. So we recognize that there's something in statute called a special day of significance. Now. Until we came along, there was a special day of significance for John Muir, and there was a special day of significance for the California poppy, and a special day of significance for California teachers. And now there's a special day of significance for Harvey Milk, and you probably won't be surprised that as soon as we started this session in January, the year, this year of the second year session, that my Republican colleagues quickly introduced a bill to create a special day of significance for Ronald Reagan. <laughs> See what we started. I'm, I'm certain there'll be more to follow. You know, having the governor veto the bill the first time, in his veto message he said that he appreciated the intent of the legislation, but he believed that Harvey's life and work should continue to be recognized and celebrated at the local level where it had its impact, as in, keep it in San Francisco, kids. So when we introduced it a second time, a lot of reporters were asking, why do you think you'll have a different outcome this time than last? But in that interim period, from 2008 to 2009, we suddenly had an Academy Award winning Hollywood feature length film. And if there's one thing this governor understands, it's box office. And Harvey Milk now had box office and the president bestowing the Presidential Medal of Freedom, and then the governor himself, along with his first lady, Maria Shriver, inducted him into the California Hall of Fame. And in his press release, he acknowledged that they were inducting Harvey into the California Hall of Fame because his life had impacted millions around the world. So we had an indication that he might look differently upon our bill this year. And of course, with the help of Herb Schultz and Lord knows all the people we had call Arnold Schwarzenegger, who he thought, we thought he might listen to. He certainly did the right thing, and what a beautiful thing it is to see, not only up and down the state of California, but around the world, people celebrating today. And these are tough times. It's not that easy to find too many things to celebrate. I also want to recognize a good friend and community leader for many decades now, probably close to a century. Uh, no, I joke. Uh, our good friend Nicole Murray Ramirez from San Diego, who as a commissioner of their human, I'll get your name wrong, I'll use ours, the Human Rights Commission in San Diego passed the first municipal resolution in support of Harvey Milk Day, and that came out of San Diego. Thank you, Nicole, for your leadership there. It helped a lot. And I'm just gonna briefly uh, share with you some comments I made last night as Speaker Pelosi joined us at the LGBT Community Center in San Francisco. And she put herself on record that don't ask, don't tell would be history by Christmas, is her wording. Wow. Just to 
put in historical context the kind of courage that Harvey exhibited, it's hard for us to remember what the world looked like for LGBT Americans in 1973, the first year he ran for public office. It had just been two years since the American Psychiatric Association had dropped homosexuality from its list of mental illnesses. And it wouldn't be another four years, thanks to the leadership of then Assemblyman Willie Brown, who authored legislation to change California statute, which no longer made it no longer illegal for consensual adult acts between two men or two women. So when Harvey was getting started, we were considered mentally ill outlaws. No exaggeration. That's who we were. So to step out into the public arena and to say you're going to run for office at that time took extraordinary, not only vision, that there could be a different kind of world where we could all participate at any level of municipal, state, federal operations. And we could do it proudly and respectfully and move our, yes, gay agenda forward. And he lived with daily threats. And if you saw the film, you know that quite well. Ugly, horrible, frightful threats and Cronenberg was so frightened every day that he would be done in. And of course, he left his own tape recorded message that should a bullet ever enter my brain, let it shatter every closet door. And that's exactly how he was assassinated, with bullet to the brain. So this took enormous courage, but he was not deterred and he would not be silenced because he knew that there was every reason to fight for the respect and the dignity and the validation of every human life. And he didn't just fight for us. He fought for seniors and for the disabled and for children and for working people. He fought for affordable, accessible transit and for parks. These are the best of American values. He is a true American hero. And you have to wonder why there was opposition to our bill. It passed on a party line vote short of one Republican who voted for it in the Senate, not a single one in the Assembly. And you have to, what, what, what's that about? And the only thing I can come up with is that the radical religious right, which is the political force to which these Republicans bow, are still intent in dragging us back to a dark, hateful, dangerous, homophobic, transphobic 20th century. The good news is we're moving forward. We're going to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. We're going to finally get an inclusive Employment Non-Discrimination Act into place. And we're going to sooner or later do away with the Defense of Marriage Act as well. And then we will be first class citizens in this country. So thank you all for being here. And it's appropriate that I put a plug in for Equality California because that's who we're supporting today. We could not do the work that we do in Sacramento. No hyperbole, we could not do it without Equality California. They're in legislative offices, they're lobbying, they're raising money, doing the canvassing that is changing people's hearts and minds. So we will be able to repeal Prop 8 in 2012, doing all the work that is in partnership with our legislative work. So thank you again. Let's have the Board of Directors of Equality California Wave your hand so we can all applaud you. Yeah. Board members. Yeah. All right. Have a great time. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Ozzy. We love you.